Good evening and welcome back to Without a Clue Painting. I'm John. So what do we have here? We have a collection of Sherman tanks. So what is their sad state of affairs? Well, these are unloved toys, meaning that basically what happened was the guy who started wanted to get involved in the hobby, got a little bit involved or might have gotten distracted and stopped. Then they collected dust for a while on his shelf, and then he finally decided to get rid of them through eBay or various other sources. Now, a lot of times these are great ways to round out your existing forces without buying blister packs at 12 to $13 a piece or having to buy chintzy stuff that's kind of less reputable if you just buy a site on seen eBay. So what we're going to do with this group right here is I'm going to show you how to turn plastic into resin. What do I mean? If you look back, when I got involved with Flames of War and started my army, I was really impressed that they had resin and metal tracks and the, the tanks and people felt pretty... Uh, Beefy, had some quality to them. Well, when the box set uh, Open Fire came out, basically it was a time when all of a sudden Flames of War started getting, for lack of a better word, cheap. Made it affordable to a lot of people, but to a lot of us folks that were spending a lot of time painting, didn't really like the feel of these new plastic tanks with plastic tracks. They felt sort of, well, how can I say? They felt sort of like toys. So, what can you do? How can you add weight? Dr. Faust, uh, one of my featured guys here, gave me the first idea. I used that a lot. I used hot glue and I used um, spare bit pieces from my German army that I completed and wasn't going to build anymore. Took those guys, cut off heads, cut off body parts, put them in the bottom of my plastic soldier company tanks to give them weight. How do we make them way if we don't have access to a bunch of boneyard parts lots of different ways you can use fishing line you can do a whole bunch of other stuff but what i'm going to concentrate on is a technique i found that allows you to still magnetize but gives these tanks some heavy weight <clears throat> for this you will need starting one silicone kitchen cock two a nail Three, the trusty DeWalt again, but this time it's mounted with a 1364 bit. Because 1364 happens to be the magic actual size for the turret hole. Now, if you have these plastic tanks, they don't have the turret hole bored out, but if you use the indention to just basically make that your pilot hole and punch that 1364 drill through it, it magically makes a perfect hole that lines up for these big old magnets that might have come with it. Now, in some of the later kits, they had real thin magnets. This is an older one. It had two thickies. So that's sort of problematic if you mount it on top of the tank, just for demonstration purposes. You'll see huge gap. I like my turrets to sit on the tank, and I don't like having a bunch of daylight, and I want to be able to have them sit on the tank flush and not with daylight. So I'm going to give these things weight, and I'm also going to give them magnetized turrets. Now, what we're going to be doing, real quick overview, is we're going to take this silicon cock, we're going to cut the tip off of it, magically on that pointed tip, it's going to be the size to that 1364th hole that you drilled. Then you're going to take a cock gun, you're going to fill that entire model full of cock. Don't worry about if it comes over the top or anything, you can just real quickly wipe it off and let it sit. <clears throat> The most I've ever had to wait when doing this process is about two days. Normally, they're perfectly ready the next night, and you can put the things together. So this is going to be a two-part process. And like I said, I don't have video editing, so I'm going to have to do part one, drilling of the holes. Part two, fill them full of cock. Hey, there's a pun in that one. And then basically all we have to do is wait. So without further ado, let's get started. 